Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Gore Hamian here with Misfit Studios as always, and today we're going to be taking a look at how to keyframe or animate using HitFilm Express. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is taking a look at keyframing or animating is really kind of the a little bit easier way of looking at it. So first, of course, we're going to need a composite shot. You can do keyframing in... Um, the editor in HitFilm, it's just gonna be a lot easier to do it in a comp shot. So let's go ahead and right click our background that we're gonna use and click make comp shot. I'm gonna be using um, just the, um, the image that I'm using as a background for the default settings on the composite shot. If you're wanting a different frame rate, um, then of course you can go into, you know, a click new and then composite shot and it'll bring up this window and you can change those settings to fit the project that you guys are working on. Um, and now that we've got our background put in, we're actually going to bring in the um, HitFilm logo. We're gonna move our background to the bottom, that way we can see it. And we're gonna bring up our control panel, as long as we've got the um, object that we're wanting to keyframe highlighted. And then over in the transform tab is gonna give you the ability to put those keyframes within the timeline. So what a keyframe is, is it's telling HitFilm that you want um, a specific value at a certain point in time within the clip. So if we want to start with this logo over here on the left side of the screen, and we want it to slowly move from left to right, we can actually keyframe and tell HitFilm, hey, I want you to start in this position, and I want you to end at this position, you know, three seconds from now. So let's go ahead and do that now. We've got the um, image that we want to animate highlighted, and we've got over in our control panel, we're going to go to the position, and we're going to click this little circle here, which is turning on keyframing. The moment you do that, HitFilm is going to put down a little marker saying that you want the value to start at this position at this point in time. So go ahead and move this drop down so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And this um, um, position here is actually marked with this little keyframe mark here. And so what we want to do is we actually can actually jump through to about three seconds. We're going to jump three seconds ahead. And we're just gonna move this over to the right. And as you can see, as soon as I let go of the mouse, or as soon as I moved that rather, it put down a keyframe saying, you know, okay, now this position has changed over a period of time. Let's go ahead and play through this. So we start this over. And over a period of three seconds, it will go from the first position that we keyframed to the last position that we keyframed. Now that is as simple as it gets with keyframing. Um, of course, there is a lot more to it than that. We can do a lot, kind of some neat animations with this. So let's go ahead and actually put in maybe a different direction. So maybe not necessarily from left to right. So let's put in a different axis. So we're going to go to, um, oh, about the middle here. And we just want to move this up just a little bit. As you can see, if we've got the position highlighted on the object that we're keyframing, you can see this little dotted line. What that is, is it's actually telling you the, the path that that object is going to take over that period of the three seconds or whatever period of time that you've um, put into the clip. So if we go back to the beginning here and click play, it will then have this small curve or arc because it is actually translating um, those keyframes in real time in your clip. So to actually understand this a little bit better, let's go ahead and open the value graph up. You can actually see that there's two sets of lines. Um, those two sets of lines actually are representations of the distance that they were at, the object that you've, we've just keyframed is gonna travel. So as you can see, these red and green lines are the exact same color as the red and green arrows that you can move things around with. That's because they are X and Y axis. So if we look at the, um, x-axis first, which is this red one here. It's going from left to right because it's not changing positions up and down or in the y-axis. And so if we play through this, you can actually see from left to right, it is traveling that distance and that keyframe. So in the y-axis, which is our green line, so if we take these set of keyframes and we move this, you know, up, we can actually change, we can move left to right too. But if we move this up, we can actually change the height of this. This is just a, um, graph representing what is happening within the scene. If we turn this into a 3D object and, you know, animate or keyframe in the z-axis, there would be a third line added to this. Um, we're not going to be going through that today because it's a little bit more advanced and things can get kind of complicated when you're doing um, it, you know, keyframing in 3D space, especially when you're moving 
um, objects around. If you guys want to know how to do that, of course, please leave a comment down below and we can make a little video on how to keyframe and animate things in 3D space and make me do a couple of videos on um, working in 3D space. So let's go ahead and control Z. And as you have noticed, you can see these little um, these little icons here. What these are going to do, if we zoom into this a little bit, um, it will actually change the way that the movement behaves. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight all of our little keyframe nodes. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this one here. So it's going to be changing the keyframes to constant, smooth, smooth in, smooth out, and then manual bezier. I'll explain what those, what all of those are here in a second. But what we want to do is we'll go ahead and um, put all of those to constant and then go ahead and play through this. So what's going to happen is it's not going to give a smooth transition from one keyframe to the next. It won't give, you know, that appearance of an animation. And so that constant is really going to just go, okay, I want it here and then I want it here. And there is going to be no, you know, smooth transition between the two. Now, if we select smooth, of course, that's going to be just the opposite. We're going to go ahead and click play. And as you can see, it's going to smooth out the travel at which this object moves. And of course, you get these little handles that you can mess with too, but we're actually going to be using that on the very last icon. So the smooth in is going to give us a look of it's going to speed up and then accelerate slowly as it stops or comes to that point in time that we've set with that keyframe. So if we play through this, you can see that it speeds up and then starts to slow down. And of course, if we smooth out, it is the exact opposite of that. It'll slowly speed up as it gets to its next keyframe. Now, the um, manual Bazier is going to give us um, these little brackets. So if we click on, you know, these, we can actually grab this and change the curve at which the... So basically think of this curve as a distance over time. The more extreme the curve, the faster that that object is going to move. So if we play through this, you can see it's going to move really quickly over this section here because the curve is a lot more steep as opposed to, you know, the curve being a lot more shallow towards the end. So now what we can do is we actually can do this with just about any other setting that has this little circle icon in the transformer in, the, in its controls. And so let's go ahead and go back to our timeline here. And we can actually just minimize all those because we're going to be using this um, within the control panel. And if you want to turn off the keyframes without sitting there and deleting all of them, you could just reselect that little circle and it will remove all of the keyframes. And whatever position you have in um, your scene, it will end up staying there. So if we click play, of course, there's no keyframes anymore, so it won't animate any longer. So the next thing I want to do is I actually want to show you this on some scale and rotation. So let's go ahead and bring in our little subscribe button. Of course, don't forget to do so. Hit the little bell icon too so you guys don't miss out on any future content. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with the HitFilm Express logo, only we're going to be using it on this subscribe button. So now that we've got my subscribe button put in, um, let's go ahead and turn on keyframing for the position, the scale, and the rotation. And what we're going to do is we're going to start, actually, you know what? We did this backwards. Let's go ahead and move this back to 100%. And we're going to turn this and move that over outside of the shot because we want it to, you know, come flying into the scene and land in the center. Now we can go ahead and turn the keyframes on because, of course, we're keyframing these to begin with on the outside because if we keyframe them while we're working in the center, it will, you know, animate and reverse, and we don't want that. So let's go ahead and go to two seconds ahead, and we're going to bring this in about that position's all right. I do want it angled just a little bit. Let's go ahead and scale that up just to make it a little larger. Just like that. That works okay. So if we play through this, of course, it's just going to go from this point and end up right there. It is a little slow, so let's go ahead and change that keyframe position without having to redo anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to change... Um, let's move it to about one second. So we're going to cut the time in half. And so we're going to move this to one second. As you can see, that, that little button is starting to peek out, of course, because we've, you know, changed the 
playhead, but not move our keyframe yet. So let's go ahead and go into our transform. And as you can see, all of our positions have been keyframed um, at the two second mark. So let's go ahead and select all of these. And we're just gonna move these over to line up with the playhead at one second. Now, let's go ahead and play through this. That's a little bit better speed. So now that we've got everything but the rotation down, let's go ahead and jump ahead, of course, to one second. And we're going to change this value here to 50. We'll bring back in. And as you can see, what this value is doing is it's telling um, the object how many times it wants to spin. We go back to our one second mark and change this to 100. It will rotate one time in one second. And so if we change that value to 50 within that one second, or we change this to 50, it'll rotate twice from the beginning to the end. So play with these values, of course, to get the right rotation that you want. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios, as always. And if you guys have any questions on um, animating or keyframing in HitFilm, please Leave a comment down below, and of course, again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It helps us out tremendously here at Misfit Studios, and we will see you guys next time.